Well, welcome to a wonderful day here in Portland, Oregon. Today we are revisiting our vlog from three years ago and we're gonna talk about my car. Ah, just look at the beauty. Three years later, the last one I made was in January of 2018 and it is now April of 2021. You can see how many more stickers this car has and Oh, just look at the beauty and how much more damage it has to. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Oh, so happy. Oh, look. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's in the, it's in the prime of its life. So Lewis actually broke down almost a year ago. It was May 1st, 2020. And the car has been sitting on our street for nearly a year. <laughs> Poor old guy. So yes, the time has finally come to say goodbye. Okay, time to do a sticker count. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the final count is about 379. Uh, plus or minus maybe two or three, because I might have counted a couple twice and I might have skipped a few, but 379, maybe 380. Uh, but that's a pretty good number of bumper stickers. You know what's really interesting to see is how some have gotten so faded and yet some have retained their color so well. I mean, I got these stickers at the same time, but these ones are in the pinnacle of health and this one is not even readable. This one is close to an unreadable, but these other ones are very good quality. These were not bumper stickers and you can clearly tell. Oh, the Thirsty Monk, I need to go back there. That was a great place. This was completely unintentional, but I love this. I'm in Portland, now what? The answer is here. Right, get off the internet, explore. The student got me that sticker because I have a Mr. Clean action figure in my classroom. Oh, this front sure is looking good. Oh yeah, we got some hanging pieces out there. Oh, so great. Yep, it's in a little worse condition than the last time I shot uh, because I rear-ended a guy towards the end of this car's life. But actually the car kept running for quite a bit more time. You can see, uh, yeah, the damage there. His car was unscathed. Let's just take one quick look under the hood to make sure there's no, like, bees nests or something. Ugh. It's looking still pretty good. Oh, there's a nice spider web right there. Oh yeah, all sorts of cobwebs in here. All right, let's take a look inside and see what we've got left. Let's make sure that we don't have anything left. Gosh, this is old. All right, let's have a look. Things looking good in here. Oh, things looking good in here. You know, maybe I'll snag. You know, this is, maybe I'll snag this. You know, save it a little, as a little keepsake. Yeah, I got some new bumper stickers for the next car. Just glue them on. You know, got the. Ooh, we have this multi V belt. I think I've had this since. Uh, since I got the car, but you know what? Maybe it'll be used in my next car uh, because I have another BMW, which is currently in the shop, naturally. Let's have a look at that spare tire. Oh, so beautiful, full of rust, so great. And let's see what's in this one. Ah, yes, the jack, the absolutely useless jack. We got something falling apart right here. That looks pretty good, yep. And of course the upholstery has been falling down since I've owned the car. Pretty great. All right, let's have one last sit in the driver's seat. Oh, yep, and there's the airbag. So great. <gasps> yeah, so when I rear-ended that guy, the airbag definitely came out. And of course, I kept driving the car for many months with just the airbag here. And it was so great, I'd just drive and if I needed to turn, like, the airbag would just kind of go with it. And then, you know, I'd like stuff the airbag back in without trying to honk the horn. It was great. Such a great driving experience. Oh yeah, and one day, uh, the panel from the sunroof just kind of like fell out. And so, I don't actually know where that panel went. I think I threw it away. But check out the motor and all the things. And there's the actual sunroof button. Works great. And check out the cracks in the windshield here. Looks so great. Goes all the way there. Here we got like a little four corners action going on. 
and then it goes, that one goes up to the, oh no, that's a power line. Oh, but there's the one that goes up to the top. There it is. And then, all right, let's just check the compartment here. Let's see. Okay. It's cleaned out. Oh, look, I even put the cigarette lighter back in. Uh, no use for that. Let's check over here. Oh yeah, this thing does not work here. Let's check what we've got in here. Okay, I did clean this out a while ago, but let's see, we've got the utterly useless owner's manual and got some, oh wait, what is this? Hold up. What? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you know what this is? Okay, story time, This it is time for story time. All right, so the story of this. So my freshman year of college, I moved into my dorm room and met my new freshman year roommate, Eben Allen. Great friend, uh, we're still friends today. And I remember for my first day of moving, my dad had bought me uh, a giant thing of root beer to put in my little mini fridge that I had gotten so I'd be freshly stocked. And you know, I was a good kid, so of course I wasn't gonna stock my mini fridge in college with real beer, so I had root beer. And so the first night Eben and I were there, I handed him a root beer out of the fridge. I think it was like the Winco brand, like Shasta, you know, the, the super cheap root beer. And I handed him the root beer and I grabbed one for myself and I said, let us toast to our first day ever of college. And we spent time talking about what we thought the year was gonna be like. We were both engineers, so we had no idea what we were in for. And then, on our last day of college, the night before we graduated, I was, you know, cleaning up my room, finishing uh, packing up my boxes, and Eben comes in, and he's like, Luke, we have to keep the tradition alive, and he hands me a root beer, and we spent our last night of college drinking a root beer, toasting to what lay ahead, and the next few times after that that we saw each other, uh, we would sometimes get a root beer, and we would kind of toast to the future, as it were. And so this root beer is from one of those times, it's like a rain check. Here, next time we meet, we'll have another root beer. And so <laughs> this has been sitting in my car for eight years, 10 years. I've owned the car for 11 years. It was from when I first owned the car. I mean, it, I mean, look at this. Look at how low it is now. That explains why the owner's manual in there is uh, full of water damage and it's brown. So it's from the root beer. That is pretty remarkable. So there's just one thing left to do. All right, it is a twist off, so. Oh, no fizz at all. Let's, let's go for it. Oh. That is bad, that is bad. Well, the auto wrecking place is coming on Thursday to tow the car, and that'll be the last that I see of it. Today's Monday, so I've got a few days to kinda continue to admire the stickers. Well, until Thursday then. All right, today's the morning that we bid farewell to Lewis. Yesterday, I had a few people over, and uh, we said some remarks, and I'm really kicking myself that I did not record it, but I'll try to do it justice. Well, what can you say about a car like Lewis? He was faithful for 11 years. We shared many memories together. He protected me from the guardrail when we slid in the snow. Uh, he sat with me in that seven-hour traffic jam on I-84 so many, so many years ago. Yeah, we've just had so many memories together, and those memories will forever be the bumper sticker on my heart. Of all the problems that e'er you had, they never stained your loyalty. And all the stickers that e'er you wore, they are stamped now to my memory. And all the miles that e'er we drove And all the stuff you helped me haul So fill to me the parting glass Good night and joy be with you all
Bye, Lewis. Bye. Well, now that it's gone, the neighbors will be pleased. Well, and there you have it, Lewis is gone. I'm both more sad and less sad than I expected to be. Uh, less sad in the sense that I'm kind of like, kind of relieved. It's been sitting in the street for almost a year since it stopped running. And I know that uh, maybe the neighbors have been a little bit annoyed that it's been sitting out there, uh, especially since there's like five or six cars just for our house. And it's been one of those things on my to-do list for like, you know, a year. But I'm more sad in the sense that like, as Lewis was being towed away, I like, you know, just got, well, I didn't get choked up, but I, you know, felt it a little bit. It was just like seeing him towed away and knowing that I'd never see that car ever again in my life, like for as long as I live. Uh, but then also knowing that, you know, like two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I'm gonna be looking at pictures and getting all nostalgic for the car. That I'm actually looking forward to. So I'm like, I'm both sad and not sad because I know that like, I'll, I'm going to enjoy the memories of that car for many years to come. And like I said, all the memories will be bumper stickers on my heart. Ah, And that, my friends, is it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. The only sign that Lewis was ever here, three giant oil spots.